Listed on the National Register of Historical Places, the Cross Mountain Miners Circle is located just south of the unincorporated township of Bryceville, off State Route 116 in north central Anderson County. Situated on the western slope of Walden Ridge within the Coal Creek Valley, the Cross Mountain Miners Circle is in a discreet site within the larger Circle Cemetery, the latter established sometime after the internment of the miners. Miners were transported to this location for burial after the fatal 1911 explosion at the Cross Mountain Mine, located a short distance from the town of Bryceville. The Miner's Circle is in a distinctive, self-contained site within the larger cemetery. In spite of a well-organized rescue effort led by the newly created Bureau of Mines, 84 miners died as a result of the explosion. The likely cause of the explosion was the ignition of dust and gas released by the roof fall. Major mining operations began the Cross Mountain Mine in 1888 when a railroad spur line was extended up the Coal Creek Valley and into Slatestone Hollow. Over the years, large amounts of volatile coal dust had accumulated in the mine shafts. On the morning of December 9, 1911, a roof fall occurred near one of the mine's entrances, which released methane gas into the air. The gas and coal dust probably got ignited when a miner approached the roof fall with an open light. A crowd consisting of miners' families and curious onlookers quickly gathered at the Cross Mountain Mine as miners and engineers immediately initiated a rescue operation. A ventilation fan was brought from a nearby mine and used to expel the after damp and force air into the mine shafts. A rescue crew from the Bureau of Mines, which had been created the previous year, arrived at around noon equipped with gas masks and oxygen tanks. This team was the first mine rescue team to use caged canaries to detect dangerous changes in air quality. Water was piped into the mine from a nearby brook, allowing the Bureau crews to extinguish fires and erect bratises. Around midnight, the first three bodies were brought out of the mine. Two bodies were recovered the following day. On Monday, rescue workers followed miners' inscriptions to an area where five miners had barricaded themselves with several tubs of drinking water. Two of the miners were burned, and two had left the barricaded area to find a way out, although all five were found alive. On December 19th, the last two miners, Alonzo Wood and Eugene Alt, were found dead behind another barricade. Before suffocating, Alt and Wood managed to inscribe farewell messages to their families on the barricade wall. It's rather inconspicuous how it received its name from the arrangement of graves around the centralized commemorative obelisk. There are 21 graves within this part of the cemetery and arranged full, but not in any particular order. There is an irregular inner circle and a partial outer circle. Marker tops vary greatly and include simple pedestals with cable molding and open and closed books, arced and simple tablets, Woodman of the World markers, and a few distinctive markers. All of the monuments are of local Tennessee marble, likely processed and dressed in Knoxville. At the center of the circle is a large commemorative obelisk erected by the United Mine Workers of America shortly after the internment of the miners and manufactured by the Tennessee Marble Works of Knoxville. Upon the central obelisk features three flat surfaces and on them is inscribed the names of all 84 miners who lost their lives in the Cross Mountain Explosion of December 9, 1911, indicating which are buried there and which of nearby cemeteries. Though only 22 are evident, 21 of those stones, while one of the markers is the resting place of two brothers. Many are presumed to be unmarked, as several large stones are placed in a single file line, while many others can be found scattered throughout the cemetery. Some are only marked with the initials and identifying them with the UMWA, or the United Mine Workers of America. The cemetery also contains two Woodmen of the World markers with their characteristic tree stump form. In their arrangement of the graves, it represents a distinctive kind of symbolism adopted and executed to commemorate and memorialize a collective tragedy within the singular occupational culture. The Cross Mountain Miner Circle of 1911 has a local antecedent and sister site in the Freighterville Miner Circle near Lake City. 
The latter commemorates the first mining disaster in the immediate area, which was actually in 1902 and the worst in Tennessee mining history. The Freighterville Circle provided the immediate prototype from which the Cross Mountain was likely conceptualized. Circled cemetery formations, however, have been utilized in other commemorative contexts as well. In Mount Olivet Cemetery in Nashville, Confederate soldiers are buried in a circle formation. In Calvary Cemetery in Memphis, a circle of markers memorializes a group of priests who died during the city's ravaging yellow fever epidemics of the 1870s. If one ever wished to visit this historical place, here's how you can get there. Firstly, you will want to travel to the northeastern portion of Tennessee. From here, you want to take I-75 to exit 128 Lake City, or is also known now as Rocky Top. From the exit 128 ramp, turn right onto Norris Freeway. From here, go to the traffic light, which is currently positioned next to Weigel's gas station, and turn left onto Highway 25 West. From here, you will go just a little ways until coming to the next red light, which is situated close to the old ShopRite grocery store, just past the library and the community center. At this red light, take a ride onto Highway 116. Bryceville is about 3.5 miles down through there, and you will then come to an intersection right in front of a school. Take a left at this intersection and drive across the bridge, and then take a right at the end of the bridge. Stay on 116 a short distance, and you'll come to see Cemetery Circle Road on your left. If you desire, since this is such a small, one-car-sized road, you can go just a bit further until you see the church, Laurel Branch Baptist Church, and pull into their parking lot where you will see a road at the end of it going towards the trees and the mountainside. You can go through here this way, as well as park in the church parking lot, or you can also walk the rest of the way if you're concerned about your vehicle having trouble through the tiny road. Be forewarned, there also is usually moss on this road, so do be careful. Want to see more videos like this? I take requests, so let me know if there's one that you would like to see yourself. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.